Hello, my name is Ishan Sandu with Texas Instruments. Today, I will be demonstrating the C2000 Piccolo Launchpad with Instaspin with the Motor Driver Booster Pack. So first you will need the Launchpad, the Motor Driver Booster Pack, a motor, and a power supply. For today's video, we're going to be using the following hardware user's guide. You can find the link on the screen below. So taking a look through this guide, we see that we need to remove the jumpers, both jumper 1 and jumper 2, because our power for this particular launch pad is going to be provided by our booster pack. And the switches need to be configured as follows. Switch 1, 2, and 3 need to be in the up or on position, as well as switch 4. Now go ahead and connect the booster pack itself to the launch pad. The connectors for the booster pack should point in the same direction as the USB connector of your launch pad. Connect your power supply as shown in the picture on the screen, as well as your motor in the same manner as the picture shown on the screen. Once you have your launch pad and booster pad connected and your motor, power supply, and USB cable connected, your hardware is all set up and ready to go. Now we have to configure our software environment for this particular booster pack. If you don't already have Code Composer Studio, you can follow the link on the screen to download and install the software. The next piece of software you'll need is Motorware, which you can find on screen at this link right here. For convenience, the link is also provided on the screen below. Now that you have your software installed, go ahead and open up Motorware. Once the software loads, you'll notice this selection menu on the side. At the top, under Instaspin FOC, the Piccolo F2802XF, which is our launch pad that we're using, and under GUI, there's this universal GUI QSG guide. This guide walks through how to use the GUI to configure your motor and to get it up and running. But before we start that, under the resources section, you'll find a lab manual, as you can see right here. So double click on that lab manual and go ahead and complete lab one. Lab one will show you how to set up your environment in Code Composer Studio and you will need to build lab 5b for the GUI to function properly. So following the instructions here, for lab 1 you'll notice that there's a bit of an introduction. Lab 1 just sets up your hardware and has a, a basic application to show you that your hardware is set up and working correctly. It walks you through how the code is set up all the lab code and make sure that you don't copy the projects into the workspace but you use them out of the parent directory as the guide says. Once you have all your labs imported into Code Composer Studio make sure to build lab 5b and then return to the universal, QS, universal GUI QSG user guide. Now that you have compiled all of your labs particularly lab 5b Return to the Universal GUI QSG or Quick Start Guide. So you can take your time to read through this guide, but we're going to jump right to the Using the GUI section, which starts on page 21, or you can follow this link in the PDF. You notice that for the setup, you need to cap, you need to copy a uh, .out file from lab5b.out to the appropriate folder. So go ahead and navigate to the folder where you did compile your lab 5b, copy the out file, and copy it back over to the TI GUI Composer folder, as you can see directly right here. Once you copy it over, don't forget to rename it to appprogram.out. If you do get an error message when you click on the link, it means that your GUI has not been installed yet. If that's the case, then follow the link on the screen 
to download and install the GUI itself. Once you have installed it, go ahead and click on it and you'll notice it, it loads another splash screen. And it'll pop up with your device number and your connections. The emulator is set by default and if your motor driver uh, booster pack and launch pad is connected to your computer, it should automatically initialize and start. So it'll take just a minute for the application itself to load, but once it does, you'll see a screen just like the one that you're seeing right now. Now, as long as your motor and power supply is connected, go ahead and enable your system and click Run. Now the tool itself is going to take a minute to identify the motor that's connected to it and identify all the properties. So in just a couple seconds, there you go, you have your motor moving. Now in these fields right here, you have uh, a speed reference in RPM. So depending on your motor, you can command different speeds and it'll accelerate to that speed at the rate that you have in this second green box. So you can go ahead and play around with a couple of these numbers, but in just a few short minutes, you're able to connect your launch pad and booster pack and get your motor up and running and spinning. Enjoy.